Hi, Andres here. Thanks for uh, liking the video and hitting that subscribe button. Well, today I want to talk about three different ways you can assign a user system administrator rights in an environment. Before getting to the main topic, let me clarify um, a confusion that I often see in most uh, global admin teams. And uh, I'm here in uh, Enter ID, I'm in a user, my user, and I see that I have the global administrator and port platform administrator roles globally in the tenant. Well, uh, where's the confusion here? Uh, most admins think that with this security role, globally in the tenant, they can do everything in the portal platform. And that's not exactly it, because um, portal platform, which comes from dynamics, right? We need to understand that it um, works a, a little bit differently. And each environment, it's its own capsule with its own database and with its own uh, security concept inside. So even though I'm globally as the platform, the owner, the admin, and I can create environments con and configure different things, uh, that doesn't mean that I can do everything inside each of the environments. For that, we need to have what's called the system administrator security role in that environment. So now, yes, we're going to see how to assign an account that uh, security role. Hi, I'm Andres and welcome to my channel. Here we dive deep into the world of Microsoft Portal platform development and governance. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up to show your support. And if you're looking to develop solutions for your business or need training and support for your technical team, feel free to reach out through the link in the description or the pinned comment. Now let's get started with the video. Now in, I'm in the PPAC in the Power Platform Admin Center. And uh, here I see as an admin all the environments. I'm going to be able to see all environments, yes, but that doesn't mean that I can do everything inside each other environment again. So uh, now there's two different ways to assign system administrator rights to a user. And that depends on if the environment is with a uh, was created with a data dataverse data store or without uh, in this case we are going to see this without dataverse okay and uh, when would you do this well uh, if you have a, um, an environment you want to implement alm but you are not going to use dataverse maybe just sharepoint for example or connecting to other data sources well that would be a, a way to go now uh, if we go inside here you'll see this particular place where we can select who is the environment admin and who is the environment maker uh, admins then can configure any aspect of the environment and makers are allowed to create apps and flows. Great distinction here because if you've only worked with the default environment, uh, you'll see that everyone can have access to that environment and also can create apps and flows. Well, that's not the case for any environment different from default. So the default environment is created with your tenant, you already know that, and anybody, everybody can create as and flows in a new brand new environment that's not the case you can assign and tailor who can do what and this is exactly what we're doing here now if you go here environment admin you just add a user it's already here mine well actually it's here because i was the one who created the environment and then the person who creates the environment is also part of the people who have system administrator rights in the environment now uh, let's pick an environment who does have a um, Dataverse data store here. And that's a center of excellence environment. Now, um, before jumping into how to configure the system administrator role, uh, let me talk about uh, one nuance that you need to understand when you install the center of excellence. And is that uh, when you do that, the service account that you use to install a center of excellence should have system administrator rights over all environments if you want the center of excellence to capture all information from app flow makers etc and then why again because well no matter that the center of excellence um service account that you use to install the solution has a global admin rights it also needs to have admin rights in each of the environments that you want to monitor which should be all environments now to the point again uh, you see that it, now the panels here uh, change. We have a disaster recovery feature here. And now in access is where we configure the security for a particular environment. Uh, let's 
See, sí. uh, first, uh, this is about security roles. So in that order, we have a whole security model. That's a topic for a, a whole different video. But you'll see that we have plenty of security roles already here. And for example, if you want to tailor who can create app and flows, uh, you'll see here uh, environment maker. This is an out of the box uh, role that you cannot change. As you can see here, environment maker cannot be adjusted, non-customizable nature, and it allows you to do different things. Uh, specifically create apps, flows, etc. And then we have the system administrator, system admin role here, which again, it's non-modifiable because it's provided by the system and it's part of the administration. And you see that all green here, uh, we can do everything in the environment. So that's for security roles. Of course, we can create our own, but for administrative purposes, we will use the out of the box ones. and then how can we assign uh, a person system administrator, system administrator rights over an environment? Well, two ways, with teams and with users. Well, teams, don't confuse them with uh, Microsoft Teams teams. Uh, the name is quite unfortunate here, but it comes from the old dynamics um, and teams are the equivalent to security groups. So when you see teams in the context of Power Platform, think of security groups and uh, users. Well, that's uh, nothing to be, be confused about. So let's start with uh, users first. And here you will see all the users that have access to the environment. Now here uh, you would see all the users from your company if you don't have a security group assigned. If the environment was created with a security group, this is going to act as a first filter so that only people inside this security group are going to have access to the environment and thus are going to be able to be added into this user section. So you can even tailor that. Now, if we go to one of these users, and uh, let's pick mine, you'll see that there's this manage security roles option here. And here you will see all the roles that this user has, has been assigned to. And system administrator would be the one that you would want to make this person completely um, owner of the environment. Now, if we go back to uh, Teams, it will be the last part, the last way to do this is with a team. Of course, we want to make things more scalable when we have a big organization. And what we would do is create a team that holds all the system administrators. And now you'll think, okay, yeah, great, but this is managed in, database, uh, in Dataverse, in the environment. Yeah, that's true, but we can have uh, Azure Active Directory and Enter ID group who holds all the global admins and synchronize that automatically with a group inside the uh, environment. So we would have here uh, the global port buffering team, for example. Uh, of course, here you can use the same dynamic convention as you're using uh, in Tridy. Or uh, business unit here, this is a matter of a topic for another video to talk about business units and the security model. You speak the uh, first one suggested, the one that you will see in here. And administrator, it really doesn't matter for uh, the purpose of this uh, uh, group, but let's pick mine, for example, uh, or the people, the person, the account that created the environment would be okay. Here is where we, and you can see here in the, in the information button, here is where the team type where uh, we have to um, take care of, of this group and synchronize it with Entry with Azure Active Directory. And you see here, team type. When we select this option over here, this is going to make this team, this group uh, that was created in the context of Dataverse and tie it, link it to a group in Azure Active Directory in Entry. If we do that, then it's synchronized and we can have the same group synchronize the members as uh, system administrators in all the environments. So centrally managing the members from Entry ID and then <clears throat> making them admins in the different environments. If we do that, you will see that <clears throat> here I can search for the uh, group name and it's uh, something that I can have a global admin team. Yeah, this is the name from here, the global admin team on Azure. 
a membership type, just pick members, although it's probably not going to matter. When you hit next, the team is going to be created. And then here you assign the, um, where is it, system administrator security role for this team. Looking for help? We can assist you with consulting, custom development, and training for your development or digital workplace team. Go to my website, fill out the contact form, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right, that's that. Uh, thanks for watching till the end. And um, well, to recap, we saw three different ways to assign system administrator security role to a user. First, for non dataverse environments. Second, for dataverse environments, we saw two ways directly user by user or with a security group that in Dataverse are called teams. And just a final note, remember that even though you may have a global Power Platform service uh, role assignment, global in the tenant, that doesn't mean that you can do everything in each particular environment. With that role, you only are able to manage the platform, but not each environment. Be aware because having system administrator rights in an environment means that you can even have access to the data so if you have a finance application if you have system administrator rights you're going to see all the data from the table so the rows in the table and well that's that thank you very much again and see you in the next one